Mheshimiwa Rais. Karibu sana. Asante. Thank you. Thank you um, uh, Mama Rachel and um, Catherine Kasabli's son. But before I speak, may I put a footnote that my speeches are concorded sometimes with Luya Iziminit and sometimes with Koroga. Uh, Mama Rachel, um, my friend, uh, the governors in absentia, the members of parliament, the senator Nairobi area, young and vibrant senator, members of the fourth estate, members of the fourth estate, I'm sorry for what you're going through, but God will see you through, and Kenyans in general. I'm here to moon my friend and leave alone the last day I was with her, courtesy of her son. I don't think whether there's any other person who knows Catherine more than I do. Because in 1976, both of us were from once. She was in Ngara, <laughs> maybe I thought it was St. Teresa, Sicily. She was in Ngara while I was in City High School, and we are neighbors. By that time, I had just graduated into a full grown-up Chokora from Hare, Hare Krishna Temple. And that went on until 1979, when both of us sat for East African Certificate of Education. She sitting, I think, in Gara, and I sitting at the City High School. And ever since that particular time, I used to see her, and I used to go to Leonard Mambo Motela's home in Gara, just next to City High School trying to find out how I would meet my sister. And her brilliant, bright color made some of us to go and look like her. I think most of you, those who are in my generation, might have come up in a generation of Ambi. And I put on my first Ambi just because I wanted to attract my sister. I hope she's hearing. <laughs> and that's a story for another day. And for my friend, Mr. Koreshi, I met you in London so many times, together with Topi Liambila. I think at that time I was a grave digger in Highgate Cemetery when I was in exile. Stories that can be told and will be told very soon. And I'm also very happy to see my friend here, George Aladwa, who was my first client when I became a lawyer. I don't know what happened, but we shall visit that another day. <laughs> On top of that also, I have Honorable Gimose, <laughs> a man who came briefly in exile, he met me in Maryland. And what we did with the Gimose, may I thank the Lord that God is real. Though we were educated. And that's survival for the fittest. Do what you can do where you are so that you don't get any blames from anybody. I've also had heart to heart discussion with Raylo Dinga and his wife, Min Ping. We have had heart-to-heart -heart discussion, recently with James Orengo in Western Province. And we also had heart-to-heart -heart discussion with the Honorable Soti here. And we have also had heart-to-heart -heart discussion about the running of Nairobi City, of which I know that we have been blessed to have two young men, two young men who are running Nairobi. But they are facing a lot of fragile in, <laughs> fidelity of the obvious Mr. Jalango, are you there? Honorable Jalango. So, okay. Uh, my prayers to my sister is, if she woke up today and she found out what is going on in Nairobi, what would she say? She has died of a disease that is curable. And that's why I stood up with my Rwanda debate. I was not talking of the smoking aspect of it. Otherwise, Jamaica would be a multi-million dollar company, a uh, country or corporate country. I was talking of medicinal that cures cancer, that cures cancer, that cures COVID, that cures other maladies. It comes from marijuana. Israel and Canada today, the leading countries in the world, together with PIFA, a pharmaceutical company, they have drawn their economic perspectives on the growth of marijuana for commercialization, industrialization, and medicine. When I speak in this country and I say, let us move to another generation of economics, people think I'm a mad person. 
I'm doing my second PhD anyway. It's my 14th degree so they can think of what they want to do. But having practiced law in the UK for many years, having practiced law in the United States for many years, and practicing law here, and having done much of public health, I exactly know what I'm talking about. Let us look at a way and means of treating our people. Cancer is treatable. People are rushed to India to be treated because of cancer, and what they're treated on, the, medic the medicine that is given in India, is all made out of marijuana. But here, people have got some popped up heads and popped up minds. When you speak of marijuana, and I've never smoked in my life, I've never smoked or touched a cigarette. I have never eaten meat. I've never taken alcohol. I am 64 years old. And when I speak of what I'm speaking about, I know what I'm talking about. I met this young man when I went to see my sister in the hospital. And we were chatting with my sister. And I was like, hmm, maybe I'm about to go. Maybe somebody somewhere needs to do something about this thing. Let us find out about research. Let us find out what we can do to arrest uh, cancer. My own sister died the other day in Mpisha Hospital because of breast cancer, something that could have been treated. Let us take this message very seriously, members of the Fourth State. I know most of you never understood me. You never did your proper research, but I would like you to do your research and to know that this country does not belong to one tribe only. It belongs to all of us. And for those who are agitating that Nairobi should be a zoned area for some particular people, let them forget it and let them think that we can as well move to Isiolo and have a new capital of this country. With those few words, I am very grateful again to Mama. Oriomuno Mama, Old Mama Wanje, Urono Mwana Wanje, Urono Mwana Wefu, Nahandu Hokuruo, Nehuma Kutiata, Katabandi Babo Lambo, Rule Nairobi, Wakwende, Asandi San.